Okay, I hope this is working because I dropped my, uh, I dropped this camera really hard yesterday. It was uh, on the tripod and slammed it over, so I hope I'm not wasting my time. But anyway, we're going to talk about oligopoly. 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 Oligopoly is a market, a type of market that exists. In fact, it pretty much is the only market that exists. Um, there's something called monopolistic competition that I don't think exists, at least in, a, in uh, the developed world anymore. So we're going to talk about oligopoly. It's important. Oligopoly is when you have a small number of big companies in an industry. There's, there's a, a way we measure uh, oligopoly called the HHI, uh, Herfindahl, Herfindahl Heis, not Heisenberg, Heisenman, Herfindahl Heisenman Index, and that's what the Justice Department uses when it's trying to decide what, whether to stop a, a companies from merging and getting bigger and bigger. And uh, Companies, I'll, I'll teach you how to find that, but I, do, I did look up uh, what happened between 2008 and 2014. Hospitals had an increase in what we call market concentration. Market concentration is measured by this Herfindahl Heisenden, Herfindahl Heisenman Index. That's why we call it the HHI. The HHI. Um, so hospitals merged and became more concentrated by 11 percent. Health insurance companies between 2008 and 2014, all of these are, uh, the level of concentration increased 79 percent. Banking, 100 percent. Telecom, 101 percent. Airlines, 16%. The auto industry actually, actually, uh, the concentration level shrank, and that probably has to do with Google uh, has a new car. They're de they're developing the and uh, who's the other the, the other uh, company that's come out that's uh, producing driver driverless cars. Well, that's certainly lowering the amount of consolidation of of market power in. Uh, so auto industry actually went down minus 34%. The energy industry had a 31% increase in, con in uh, concentration, and the average change was a 43% increase in concentration. Now, what does concentration mean? It means market power <sighs> increases per firm as we get less and less companies. And we've gotten to the, this point worldwide where brands are owned by massive corporations. And so you think, oh, I, I bought something from Frito Company. Ha! <laughs> well, it turns out Frito-Lay is owned by somebody else who's owned by somebody else. And there are big, big companies out there. And there's a few massive companies. And uh, so when that happens, this is what we call an oligopoly. So let me show you how to find the HHI for measuring it. Um, H H I Herfindahl Heisenman index is going to you're going to just take the uh, the firms in an industry and you're going to take the percentage, not the decimal. So if if one firm has 25% of the, of the sales in a market, then you're going to say they have 25. And if another one has uh, 25, and another one has 25, and another one has 25, you're going to square 
those percentages. And that's how you find the HHI. It's pretty simple. So, for example, let's take a monopoly. A monopoly has one seller, right? The monopoly is selling. So with a monopoly, oops, it's 100 squared, and there is no other company. So the value of the HHI for the monopoly is uh, 10,000, right? 100 times 100 is 10,000. If you have 100 companies all with 1%, so we would have, you know, a fairly, I would say if you have 100 companies with, with uh, 1%, um, that's probably a, com uh, a, a, uh, a very competitive, not concentrated industry because nobody's the big, big, big person. There's no big, big, big corporation. So we could do one squared plus one squared plus one squared plus one squared for the top 100, and it would be the same as one plus one plus one plus one, blah, 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 for 100 times. So a very, um, a very competitive market with a lot of small companies would be equal to 100. So we have this range from 10,000 to 100. And what's been going on over time is that the HHI numbers are getting bigger because we're getting bigger and bigger companies and very few of the small startup companies that we used to have. And so these big companies are getting a lot of power. And this has led to something that uh, you might, if you didn't know it existed, you might want to do some research on something called crony capitalism. There's about, because this is so new, there's probably five different names that are being used for crony capitalism. But basically, when industry gets so big, it can influence government and they act as cronies for each other. Sort of, you pat my back, I'll pat yours. Uh, we've seen a lot of that in the past few years. And it's, it's difficult. It's, uh, it's very difficult if you come into, like say the presidency, and you're like, I want to change things. I want to get rid of the corruption. I want to change things, blah, blah, blah. Um, if you walk in, you have, there are people who get a lot of campaign donations from big, big corporations who can afford to pay a lot of money. So uh, we're in a different time. People are like, well, capitalism, you know, isn't working right. And it's like, well, because this isn't capitalism anymore. This is what we call crony capitalism. It's something different. Um, so I've started off by uh, going through the HHI. Can you see that? Um, let's let's calculate another one of these. Uh, what if I have uh, one firm has 39 percent, another firm has uh, 21 percent. So this would be like firm A, firm B, firm C. Okay. Um, 20% and firm D 10% so wait a minute we got firm E let's say that's 10% let's see 20 40 uh, okay this is 50 right or 60 wait a minute 39 plus the 1, 40, okay, that's 60. Okay, this adds up, it has to add up to 100%. Okay, so that's the market in this made up market I have. Can you calculate the HHI? That could probably be a test question. Yeah. Can you calculate that? So, um, 
what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take each one of these and square them. 39 squared, 21 squared, 20 squared, 10 squared, 10 squared, and add them up. And let's see. Let's see if I have batteries in this. Okay, so 39 squared. Where is the square on this thing? Squared equals 15, 21. 21 squared, 441. Okay, and let's see, 20 squared. Four hundred. One hundred. I don't have to calculate that one. One hundred. Okay. So twenty-five sixty-two. So the HHI would be twenty-five sixty-two for this made-up industry. And that's really quite a concentrated industry. So be aware of that, that, um, that uh, a lot of highly concentrated industries may be around 3,000 or 2,500. OK? So just, just understand that. And uh, when they get up close to 10,000, we're talking about maybe um, some, some industry that's mostly like Pepsi and Coke and, you know, Fanta and some of these other soft drink companies are just little bitty nothings and everybody else is Pepsi and Coke. That would be an example, like the beverage industry would have a very high concentration ratio. Uh, so let me erase this stuff. And let's talk about the conditions of oligopoly. So, Kleenex, perfect eraser. Oligopoly. What is oligopoly? A few. Interdependent companies in the industry. And by few, um, you know, we're talking less than 50. Um, I mean, you can go ahead and you can measure, if you're measuring to see if there is oligopoly, you can take the top 100. But usually, if it's less than 50, it's an oligopoly. But, but we're looking, really, an oligopoly needs to be uh, less than that. Uh, um, you know, the main companies have most, you put the main few companies together, and they have most of the, of the sales. Uh, in the industry, and there may be a few other little little nobodies that are selling a little bit. Um, even you know, we all got into this craft beer stuff, the small uh, the the small breweries, and we're all like, oh, I love this stuff. And it started out that that was a threat to the big breweries, so they bought up most of those little craft breweries, and now they sell they sell the craft beers as if they're little craft beers when actually they're owned by Anheuser-Busch or Miller. <laughs> so uh, everything we think is uh, small, if you do your research, you can find out it's, it's big. There's big, big, big companies behind them. And there didn't used to be. I say they're interdependent companies because your competitor if they behave a certain way, will influence you. So you have the power to impact your competitors and 
Your competitors have the power to impact you. I think of the airlines, you know, and, and at the time I'm filming this, we had the, we had United Airlines did uh, uh, did something not real nice, and there's been a lot of memes and people making fun of them on on uh, social media. And what they've done has affected other airlines, hasn't it? Uh, I saw. Um, Delta put out a statement um, about how they were going to fix something to make sure that that didn't happen to them. I think it was, uh, no, once, we, once we seat you on the plane, we won't take you off. It was some kind of statement like that. Um, but also, if United does something that makes everybody mad and they start flying Southwest, then that, or Delta, or, or one of the other few airlines, uh, then we should find that that affects the other company's uh, profit and loss, doesn't it? So everything you do affects everybody else. And there's also this thing they might collude. It's, it's, it's against the rules to collude. Um, when they collude, that's a, that's a cartel. When they start acting like a monopolist, like, let's put it all together and act like a monopolist, that's a cartel. And by now you should know about cartels. They never, they never stick together. They always, they always fail. But uh, there's, there's some fascinating stories of, of uh, attempts to collude. Um, Whirlpool was involved in a, uh, in a attempt to collude back in the 19 late 50s. I think it was the early 60s, and. A group of companies, just a few, that were selling, they were selling electrical parts. So things for, for fixing your refrigerator and your washing machine and your freezer.